Okay, then after we've planned the appropriate location for our databases and transaction log files, we need to implement the plan. So in this little demonstration, we're just going to have a look at some of the options that we actually have for configuring the databases. So just in my GUI here, we've got the server configuration. If we highlight this up a little bit and just have a look at our mailbox roles, what we can see is we've got our various servers with the various databases on there. So one of the things I want to do here now is, for example, I've implemented a SAN to aid clustering and give me some high performance centralized storage. So one of the things I need to do now is move all of the files off the local server to the SAN location. So first things we'll have a look at here is just some of the options that we get within the, the mailbox databases. So we go for mailbox database one, just right click and have a look at the properties. Some of the things we can do on here is on the general page, just get some general information. Maintenance tab allows us to decide things like journal recipients, so any mail coming through this mailbox, it may be a secure mailbox database, can be sent to a journal recipient, that will be sent as an attachment, they can then verify the mail sent backwards and forwards. We've also got our maintenance schedule intact here, so we've got things like our online maintenance schedule, we can see when it runs, generally speaking out of hours. We can decide whether or not we mount the database at startup, decide whether or not we want to restore this database and overwrite it and enable circular logging for short-term databases where we're not really concerned if we need to get the data back again. The limits tab here does things like issuing warnings if the user gets to a certain size of mailbox, prohibits sending it another size, prohibits send and receive at this size here as well. We've then got when do we want to run these message intervals, how long do we want to keep deleted items before we purge them completely and also keep deleted mailboxes for a certain number of days. So in the case of deleted items for a number of days, how long do we want to keep the mail and allow the user to retrieve the mail if they empty out their deleted items. Deleted mailbox for a number of certain days is quite handy if we delete say a user account by mistake and we need to get that mailbox back. We've then got the option down here not to permanently delete any items until we've backed everything up. Last one we have is client settings. And this little tab here just allows me to specify things like default public folder databases for the users when they go into Outlook and the offline address book if we have any set up. So now that we've had a quick look at these options, what I now need to do is just move my database and my log files. So what we'll do with the mailbox database, a couple of different ways we could do this. We could right click and then what we could do is move the database path. Another option is to highlight in the central content pane and then down at the right hand side under the action pane we can also move the database path as well. Now anything we do here will actually create an exchange management shell. So we'll move the database path, we can see the name of the database, we can see where it's currently stored and then we can decide exactly where we're going to move it to. So what I'm going to do at this point here, I'm just going to move it to a folder called SAN and I'll do backslash database backslash name of the database being mailbox database one And then all I need to do, specify.adb, and then past this point here, click move. As we can see, it's now moving the database, so it's dismounting the database, then moving the database files, it's telling me here it's going to dismount the database. Shouldn't take too long, there's not a lot of information in there. Once this is all done, I should see the exchange management shell that was created to move this database. So as we can see, now sitting on my high speed SAN, we can see the exchange management shell that was created to move that database. Next thing I should really do as well is actually move the log files that are associated with this database, but we'll leave that uh, for a later date. So that's moving the database files themselves. We could have also done it through the exchange management shell. That's the end of this demonstration. Thanks very much. So just continuing on here, we'll look at moving the database path and the log file path by using the exchange management shell. So what we need to do is we need to type in the various commands to allow us to move these locations. And again, this could be because what we're doing here is we're moving to a centralized storage location, or perhaps we're just moving to a faster disk internally in the server. So what I'll do first, I'll move the log file path. So I'll just type in the command in order to do that. So as we can see now, we're going to move this in the case of the log file path, we're going to move that to new folder 3 logs. So we'll hit return. 
just asking us, are we sure we want to do this? Yes, we are. Next thing it'll ask me is, do I want to temporarily dismount this database? Which again, I do. So as we can see now, by all the zeros moving along the top of the screen, we're moving the log files. Once this is all finished, the log files have now been relocated. The next thing to do will be to, re to move the database path to a new location as well. So now we've typed in the command to do that. So we've got move database path ID, mailbox database one. We're going to move the EDB file path and we're going to move that to our new folder three. So we'll hit return. As we can see, it's saying, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I am. And again, it's going to tell me that the database will be temporarily dismounted. So I'm happy with that as well. And we've also moved the database path as well. So we've had a look at doing this through the GUI. We've had a look at doing it through the command shell. Me personally, prefer the GUI much easier.